call this meeting of the Miami Township Board of Trustees to order on Tuesday, September 3rd, 2024. Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Mr. Matthews, will you please call the roll? Mr. Culp? Here. Mr. Posey? Here. Mr. Morris? Chief Stegelmeyer, will you please proceed with the reading of casualties? Good evening, board. The following is a list of the first responder casualties for the period of August 21st through September the 3rd of 2024. K-9 Odin from the Alton Police Department in Illinois, end of watch August 22nd, 2024. Investigator Taylor Jamison Bristow from the Carroll County Sheriff's Office in Georgia, end of watch August 23rd, 2024. Police Officer Austin McIntyre from the San Diego Police Department, California, end of watch August 26th, 2024. Investigator Wayne David from the Washington, D.C. Metropolitan Police Department, end of watch August 28th, 2024. Police Officer Darren Burks from the Dallas Police Department in Texas, end of watch August 29th, 2024. And Felicia Carson from the Os Osage Beach Police Department, Missouri, end of watch August 31st, 2024. Please join me in a moment, moment of silence for these first responders. Thank you. There are no special guests or presentations this evening, so we'll move on to the consent agenda. Are there any, any questions on the consent agenda? I motion to approve the consent agenda. Is there a second? I will second. Mr. Culp? Aye. Mr. Posey? Aye. Mr. McCord, you have resolution 73, 2024. Mm -hmm. Good evening, board. Resolution 073-2024 is an authorization to uh, assess the costs and expenses for a lighting district, specifically down at Austin Landing, um, to the parcel owners as dictated uh, by some information that was received from uh, the management down at Austin Landing. And those would be forwarded on to the county auditor for assessment on their 2025 tax statements. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Mr. Schweiker, you have resolution 74, 75, and 76, 2024. Good evening, board. I'll try not to be too lengthy tonight. Resolution uh, 74, 2024 is a resolution to appro approve amendments to the appropriation of funds. Our last meeting in, work se in the work session, um, I discussed the not needing the scheduled allocation for a grinder with the ARP funds. And then I also went on to explain the the acceptance award for a grant, it was the H2 Ohio Rivers grant uh, to reduce the chloride reduction you know, throughout the state of Ohio. So in this resolution, I'm asking the Board of Trustees to utilize ARP funds to acquire a truck chassis. It would be a replacement asset that's 18 years old and on the verge of, uh, of getting replaced anyways. Um, so that's the appropriation memo uh, and then <coughs> Do you have any questions regarding that appropriation? The, OSA, the 75 2024 is a resolution authorizing the township administrator to execute the necessary documents for the purchase of this uh, vehicle. Uh, I'd just like to note that we did look at two uh, comparable quotes um, that are both ODOT contract, one from FIDA Freightliner Cincinnati and one from Stoops Freightliner Dayton. And the uh, more affordable option was to go with uh, FIDA Freightliner Cincinnati. Again, I just want to note that this specific purchase is replacing an 18-year-old asset uh, that will be scheduled for replacement soon. Be happy to answer any questions regarding the appropriation and the resolution to purchase a vehicle. Okay. And then resolution 76, 2024 is a resolution to authorize the execu execution and delivery of an application for financial assistance through District 4 OPWC. Uh, this <coughs> grant application, uh, back, in, back in the spring, we moved forward with a pavement assessment, and in the, uh, in the packet tonight, I've attached a map that kind of shows 
uh, an area that was selected um, for this application. We have our Huber South Platte. Again, part of our strategy is to try and go for federal and state funding when applicable to put back into these subdivisions. So this application would go toward the Huber South. Uh, we're gonna break it down in phases, but resurfacing, curb program, ADA compliance. So we've sk we slated a project for phase one in your packet. I have a list of streets for this project uh, and we wanna submit this to OPWC for uh, potential funding. Um, we would dedicate 480,000, but our ask is 938,000 and receive funds from the OPWC application, which is the Ohio Public Works Commission. So um, be happy to answer any questions regarding this resolution. Thank you. All right, thank you. Mr. Carlson, you have resolution 77, 2024. Good evening, board. Uh, this resolution is being brought forward tonight uh, in response to a work session discussion at our last Board of Trustees meeting on August 20th. Uh, specifically, uh, staff was directed to prepare a resolution to uh, establish a moratorium on the land uses of fueling station, convenience store, and small box discount store. Uh, all three of these land uses are further defined in the, the resolution language, but um, generally speaking, the concept is to propose a one-year uh, moratorium on these land uses. Uh, there are several goals here uh, for the moratorium period. I'll quickly review uh, the plan for this moratorium. Uh, first being uh, allowing time to, uh, for staff to provide recommendations for amending the zoning resolution with new definitions to clarify the resolution's intent regarding these land uses. So uh, this resolution being brought forward tonight uh, very clearly defines these land uses. However, one area that our zoning resolution, the township wide zoning resolution is lacking is very, uh, very clear definitions on certain land uses. So this is a top priority for this moratorium. Uh, second, staff will review the zoning resolution based on the findings and recommendations of the plan. Uh, in 2023, Miami Township uh, adopted a comprehensive plan. Uh, several of the goals and objectives of the plan uh, relate to some of these land uses, specifically a goal review existing zoning district development standards to ensure that new residential and commercial development is built in a sustainable manner. That's one other lens we'd like to view these land uses through. Third, staff will review the zoning map to determine where these land uses may currently be located, either for new build or redevelopment, and make recommendations for zoning resolution or zoning map amendments to ensure orderly development. Uh, so again, these are the three broad uh, goals of this moratorium. Uh, one uh, item of note, again, a moratorium is not necessarily a banning. It's a temporary hold, temporary pause on these types of land uses to allow staff time uh, before uh, receiving certain application types. Uh, so with that, uh, a second item uh, that was included in this resolution uh, is ex specific exemptions for many existing applications. Uh, certain applications, uh, one public hearing tonight and one public hearing to be heard at a future meeting, uh, both have applications that have already been filed, have recommendations for approval from the Miami Township Zoning Commission, and are pending final review by the Board of Trustees. Uh, so with existing applications, uh, this moratorium would uh, theoretically apply to future applications rather than existing applications. Uh, if there are any questions or concerns from the Board, I'd be happy to discuss. Um, but again, I uh, wanted to be clear that uh, staff worked to prepare a plan uh, and will work with the Zoning Commission, uh, Township Administrator, and Board of Trustees to uh, provide recommendations and uh, enact those changes. Alex, <clears throat> would there be any impact to the staff's obligations under this resolution if it were amended to be only for six months or 180 days? Uh, no, the staff would certainly be able to uh, review these same items in a, on a shorter timeline. There's no issues there. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? All right, uh, now it's time for the public comments. This is the portion of the meeting when Miami Township residents are invited to share their thoughts with the board. Your comments are valued and are taken into careful consideration. The board will not engage in dialogue at this time. Presentations are limited to five minutes each. And if you intend to speak about the uh, zoning issue that we have coming up later, the Wawa uh, gas station, um, please wait until that zoning issue is opened and then you'll have an opportunity to speak for or against um, uh, that uh, zoning issue. So that being said, is there anyone that would like to 
share comments that are not related to that? Please come forward. Hello, my name is Clarence K. Williams. I'm here today to speak upon Sergeant Siney and Officer Hessler and the rest of the officers who are following Siney's vengeance. This is all about vengeance. He's been doing stuff to me and I'm just, I have PTSD over this anymore, I do. Post traumatic stress disorder. I can't sleep, I can't eat. This man have told me that's why everybody want to kick my a double s this is one of the officers you know and then tell me i'm gonna have you trespass and had it done out of a complex where i used to live i don't live there no more so this is basically what i'm here for i'm here today to talk about the vengeance that the miami township police department has against me which includes signy hessler Miller and Officer Danielle and others. Sergeant Siney has been very rude disposition where he is, where he talks crazy to people and very dis, dis out of order to be an officer. I'm here asking if someone can help this officer to back up off of me. I'm coming up Miami Township 741. Officer Hessler made a point. He's coming downhill. He's seen the car I drive, a 2018 Cadillac. He's seen that car I drive, made a point to turn around, get behind me and gave me a $200 ticket. I'm still paying on two months later. I have no reason to sit up here to make up anything like Sergeant Siney says on his radio one day. He was um, had me in a room talking to me. And he goes, oh, now you're making up stuff. But like I said before, these, these officers are out of order. They really are. Y you guys only don't know, only if you knew, okay? When they get around me, they just as tough and bad. They even have Hessler say to me, and my wife one day. I'm bad, aren't I, Clarence? I'm a tough ass, aren't I? I'm like, you're just doing your job. <laughs> Basically, you know, you want to be tough, but you're being tough to the wrong people. I'm a citizen like everybody else. I'm just asking this man to back up off me. I don't have no $200 just to throw away on a ticket. And I know I wasn't speeding that day, but I went to court and the judge did take like, what, 10 miles off the ticket, 20 miles or something like that off? Because he said I was doing 65 coming up the hill when it's a 35. This just don't make no sense, man. The guy has it out for me. He had um, Maggie Woods. This is how it all started, Mag, with a lady named Maggie Woods over at Lions Gate. I don't know if he liking her or whatever, but he's get, getting vengeance at me for her, okay? She said something to me one day and I had to let her know she was out of order. And that day when I let that <laughs> manager know she's out of order, it's been hell to tell with me. Anytime an officer see me or stop me, it's harassment. I'm tired of it. I have a 10 year old daughter just turned 10 with Down syndrome. And only if you see how these officers have looked at my child when they have come to me or my wife call for something. They just look at my child like she's a demon or something. This just don't make sense. I don't drink alcohol, beer, wine. I'm addressing this for that reason because people stereotype people when they drinking or whatever, they doing drugs or whatever. I'm not on drugs. I don't drink. I don't have nothing against no one. You know, I'm just trying to live out here in this area and raise my child in a decent area. That's it. I've been out here now 19 years in this area. And all of a sudden, when uh, me and my wife, we have had disagreements like any other married couple. And so when we had disagreements, they come out, I'm the aggressor. 
I'm the one they want, you know. And then when my wife and I, we make up, it's like they still taunt me, still, you know, just constantly, just constantly at me. And I'm like, what is going on? You know, I ain't doing nothing no more. I'm just trying to live my life and raise my child. But thank you for the comments. And I just want someone to uh, try to address this matter yeah. as soon as possible. Good. Because if I had the money to move out this area, I would move out this area. It's gotten that bad. You know, this officer, Hessler, he sits down in Myers parking lot all day, every day. Just sits there. Okay. Thank you. Your five minutes is up. But uh, Chief Stegelmeyer, I assume you've reviewed the videotapes and we can talk later. Uh, We'll move now to uh, move to close a public comments portion and move to the consideration of votes of resolutions and motions. I think we have some. Oh, there might, might be a few more. Oh, comments? No, I'm sorry. I think they're waiting for the. Are there more public comments tonight that aren't associated with the Wawa gas station and the grocery? Okay. Uh, so I move to close a public comments portion and move to the consideration of votes of resolutions and motions. Um, I motion to approve resolution 73 2024 resolution to authorize the costs and expenses of a lighting district to be assessed as provided for under the Ohio revised code chapter 515. Can I get a second? I will second. Is there any discussion? Mr. Culp. Aye. Mr. Posey. Aye. I motion to approve resolution 74 2024 a resolution to approve amendments to the appropriation of funds for 2024. Can I get a second? I will second. Is there any discussion? Mr. Culp? Aye. Mr. Posey? Aye. I motion to approve resolution 75 2024, a resolution authorizing the township administrator to execute any necessary documents for the purchase of a road department vehicle. Can I get a second? I will second. Is there any discussion? Mr. Culp? Aye. Mr. Posey. Aye. I motion to approve resolution 76, 2024, a resolution to authorize the execution and delivery of an application for financial assistance through District District 4, Ohio Public Works Commission. Can I get a second? I will second. Is there any discussion? Mr. Culp. Aye. Mr. Posey. Aye. I would like to make a motion to amend resolution number 77-2024 a resolution imposing a moratorium on issuance or granting of applications or permits for a fueling station, a convenience store, and or a small box discount store in Miami Township, Montgomery County, Ohio, for a period of six months, 180 days, revising section one, two, three, and four of the therefore be it resolved section to mirror the 180 days, six months of the first amendment. Can I get a second? I'll second. Is there any discussion? Mr. Culp? Aye. Mr. Posey? Aye. Uh, we're moving on to public. Yeah. Oh, okay, gotcha. Uh, having made the motion to amend, I will make the motion to adopt the uh, amended resolution. Can I get a second? I'll second. Mr. Culp? Aye. Mr. Posey? Aye. So we have one public hearing tonight. Um, I move that we open the public hearing for zoning case 37405. Can I get a second? I will second. Is there any discussion? Mr. Culp? Aye. Mr. Posey? Aye. Zoning case number 37405 is now open. The following will be the order in which this hearing will proceed. The staff will give a report. The applicant will give a presentation. All proponents will speak. All opponents will speak. A time limit of five minutes will be placed on each of the speakers. Please give your name and address for the record, and the board will close a public hearing prior to taking final action. The board will now hear the report of the staff. Mr. Carlson, have the legal requirements for this hearing been met, and do you have a recommendation from the Miami Township Zoning Commission? Yes, good evening, board. Uh, the legal requirements for this hearing have been met, and yes, I do have a recommendation from the Township Zoning Commission. Uh, but, uh, quickly, I will jump into some of the case details. Um, uh, this application is for a final development plan for a Wawa fuel station. Uh, final development plan review uh, is the uh, sort of last check in a plan development prior to uh, issuance of a zoning certificate. This is the 
uh, point of a process where once land uses uh, and a preliminary plan have been approved, uh, we are reviewing the specifics of individual sites. Uh, so some of those items being a site plan, such as lighting, landscaping, parking, et cetera, uh, the building design, and then uh, importantly, the site traffic and the traffic infrastructure. Uh, so quickly, the Zoning Commission did recommend approval with stipulations and a four to zero vote. Uh, I will review the details of the case and then uh, some of the stipulations that came out of the Zoning Commission hearing. Uh, for reference, the parcel is located uh, along Spring Grove Pike, say Route 741, uh, along Miami Village Drive. Uh, here's a quick look at the permitted uses within the Exchange of Spring Valley. Uh, one gasoline service or filling station was permitted uh, as part of the approval of the Exchange of Spring Valley. Uh, this lot is lot eight within the larger Exchange of Spring Valley, the southern southwesternmost parcel along State Route 741. Uh, the Wawa fuel station is a 5,900 roughly square foot building uh, with 37 parking stalls and uh, 12 uh, counting the fuel bays. Uh, so this is compliant to our code. Uh, and secondly, all of the building setbacks uh, are also compliant with the plan development standards. Uh, here's another look. Uh, there's a lot going on in this drawing, so just to be uh, call attention to a couple items. Uh, again, building sort of centrally located, the dumpster enclosure. I'll show some more detail on that in a minute. Uh, the building canopy, again, more information, and then EV charging area uh, in the, uh, that would be northwest portion of the site. Um, get a little more detail on that in a minute as well. Uh, so traffic uh, was a large point of conversation that staff had with the applicant uh, as this application was initially being filed, uh, but quickly wanted to show that uh, staff has worked with ODOT, Montgomery County Engineer's Office, Township Public Works Office, and the ownership of the exchange at Spring Valley to discuss uh, some of the existing traffic concerns, but also concerns uh, that would be uh, generated by uh, development of a Wawa fuel station or certainly any other land use. Uh, this is sort of the last major piece, uh, frontage piece of the Exchange of Spring Valley. Uh, and again, realistically, any land use, be it a, a restaurant or retail, will generate new traffic. And this site has challenges, so uh, those were brought up as part of this uh, review. So those primary considerations really were Marketplace Drive, where it intersects with Miami Village. Uh, and then the State Route 741 Spring River Pike traffic signal. I'll jump into those in topics individually. Uh, so looking at Marketplace Drive, uh, and again, these, these sort of interplay together, so I'll reference both of them uh, in each slide, but uh, looking at the Marketplace Drive uh, entrance into the Exchange of Spring Valley, one of the concerns there was uh, it is one of the only, if I believe actually the only uh, south entrance into the exchange of Spring Valley off of a public roadway that does not have any traffic control islands. I'm sure you're familiar with those driving into the exchange of Spring Valley, uh, but this is the only one that does not have any existing island. So people could left turn from Miami Village into the exchange of Spring Valley. Uh, one of the really uh, uh, big concerns that ODOT brought up was uh, with the potential to back up traffic onto Springboro Pike should people be queuing to turn left uh, into this entrance. Uh, and then secondly, uh, a result of adding this traffic control island would allow lengthening of the left turn lane on Miami Village Drive uh, for a Spring Road Pike queue. I'll show another image of that here in a minute. So again, with that installation, two things would happen. Uh, one would prevent people from turning into the site and they would need to go uh, to the second drive like most of Exchange at Spring Valley. But secondly, uh, would take that current turn lane, left turn lane is about 140 feet to 260 feet. Um, a pretty major issue right now, I'm sure again everybody having driven this, uh, it only takes about five vehicles, uh, you know, average size vehicles in that left turn lane before it blocks people who are trying to go straight or right onto Springboro Pike. So it has a sort of a compounding effect of you know, five or six vehicles who are wanting to turn left then block all of the right flow traffic as well. Um, so by lengthening this turn lane, you can prepare more people for a more efficient queue, uh, which secondarily, talking with ODOT, uh, they have recognized that this specific signal uh, needs to be reviewed for signal timing regardless of Wawa. Uh, Wawa moving forward certainly will provide good updated numbers on traffic counts. The applicant has already started to work with ODOT on this uh, and has agreed to uh, support this modification. Um, but again, 
ODOT has said, it is a longer term, uh, term signal timing that needs to be reviewed. So these two major changes, again, installation of the uh, intersection block and traffic signal timing and lengthening of the turn lane, working with ODOT and Montgomery County Engineer's Office, uh, feel that this is a uh, sort of rising tide raises all ships. All three of these uh, changes together will uh, greatly improve flow, one, counting Wawa, but separately uh, for existing travel as well. Uh, looking at site landscaping, uh, Wawa worked with staff to provide uh, a pretty uh, comprehensive landscaping plan, specifically around the periphery of the site. Um, but again, a couple of complicating factors as well that they worked through with us. Um, at the northern entrance there, uh, onto, I'm blanking on that street name, Commerce Boulevard. Um, a portion of that land is in ODOT right of way. There on the north side of that uh, drive on Commerce Boulevard, there are mirrored trees there that are on public property. Uh, so rather than move the trees all the way back and Anyway, they worked with ODOT to create a really nice mirrored view as you come into Commerce Boulevard, uh, a pretty nice uh, aesthetic coming into the site. Another item in particular, it's not shown in this drawing, but you can see on the other side, the dumpster enclosure is located uh, toward the south side of the site. Uh, Twelve green giant uh, arborvitaes are proposed to go around that dumpster enclosure, uh, which already meets our design standards, but uh, those trees will also help soften that. But beyond that, they, all, they meet all site tree requirements. Uh, looking at signage, Wawa has prepared a uh, sign package that is compliant with our zoning standards. They have their primary monument sign, uh, and then they have a uh, compliant number of building signs, as well as uh, you know, a, a normal amount of signage on uh, building or on uh, fuel pumps themselves, but again, otherwise is compliant. Uh, as far as site lighting, uh, this shows the new light, lights being added. There are new light poles, there are canopy lights, uh, and certain wall packs on the building itself for security lighting. Um, all lighting standards have been met. Uh, I specifically put here the uh, six-foot candle maximum for the general site. Uh, however, the canopy is allowed to go up to 10-foot candles. They have met both of these standards. Uh, light levels do not exceed uh, 0.2 foot candles at the property line, 0.5 is the maximum. Uh, and finally, lighting is set to 3,000 Kelvin uh, across the entire site. Put a quick image in here uh, just to uh, give a quick example. Uh, I know we sort of talk about that number in a lot of public hearings, but what that actually means. Uh, 3,000 Kelvin is a much warmer color temperature than what uh, certain sites may have. This is a standard the township is pushing across the board. Uh, it is a night-friendly uh, light is sort of the terminology used. It's much softer, uh, much less harsh for drivers uh, or for residents, and much less of an ambient glow uh, than what uh, a higher Kelvin light would give. And then quickly a look at the fuel canopy itself. Uh, the canopy is a up-tilted canopy design. Uh, one item that came out of that was discussion, and, and uh, the applicant gave us a good detail on the fixture itself, but uh, one concern was that the lights would be directly casting outward from a tilted canopy. However, they are offset uh, at the same degree, uh, so functionally the lights are not uh, any different than a normal mount canopy. Um, with the lights tilting up, we did also review with ODOT as it uh, angles towards State Route 741, and they did not have any additional concerns beyond the materials the applicant provided for uh, light mitigation. Uh, one image in the upper right you can see uh, Homestead Senior Living is a new building within the ex Exchange of Spring Valley, sort of catty corner to this site. Uh, one recommendation that came out of the zoning hearing was uh, to provide additional support for the fact that no lights should be directly viewed from Homestead and that whatever needs to happen to create enclosures to prevent direct view of, uh, you know, so you're not looking straight into a light bulb from a residential window, that additional protection is given. Pedestrian connections, uh, this site supports pedestrian connections uh, within the Exchange of Spring Valley Plan Development. An 11-foot multi-use path is along Spring River Pike. Uh, the applicant has shown a direct connection uh, to that multi-use path and has included four bike racks uh, from the Zoning Commission recommendation. Uh, and finally, we will look at the building design of the uh, fuel station itself. Uh, here are some of the requirements within the Exchange of Spring Valley. Uh, the primary one I'll call out is that uh, brick and stone must be uh, used as components to all of the design. 
Uh, so I'll show each elevation. Uh, the top image is the original submitted application, and then the larger bottom image is the uh, current plan image. Staff worked with the applicant to uh, make a couple of tweaks. I'll call some of them out quickly. Uh, first, the Wawa, the sort of the white board, has been updated to be a brick material, a more earth tone, natural material, uh, compliant with the Exchange of Spring Valley. Uh, you also see there are certain signage components. Uh, you know, there's the sandwich and the coffee and the made to order. Uh, that was beyond our signage standards. Uh, they pulled that out and, it's, and instead exchanged additional glazing. Um, as well as a, a base treatment to the entirety of the facade. It feels greatly improved. Uh, here is the view from Miami Village Drive. Again, replaced signage, uh, an outdoor sort of storage area. Uh, moved that to the other side and instead added additional glass uh, to both entry and the uh, side sort of staff entrance. Here's a view from Springboro Pike. Um, similarly, a base treatment was added. Uh, help create a little bit more of a human scale element while also introducing more glass to the building. Uh, and finally, the internal view from Marketplace Drive. Again, uh, this was a, a sort of blank facade that needed some additional architectural detail. It got that full base treatment as well as uh, additional glazing. Uh, so finally, some of the stipulations that came out of the Zoning Commission case. Again, uh, recommended approval and four to zero vote. Number one being that uh, road right-of-way permit from the Township Public Works Department be obtained uh, for all of the aforementioned improvements. Um, that's sort of a, a requirement anyway, but needed wanted to be stated. Um, and then finally, that uh, additional striping on Marketplace Drive uh, occur uh, or a plan uh, be put in place there. Um, some of the striping should have been done previously already, we found according to a previous plan, but as this development is coming along, striping on the private roadway needs done as well to differentiate left and right turns and then uh, median blocking. Uh, second, approval from ODOT to place the trees in the right of way on the north of the property before zoning certificate is issued. I mentioned those previously. Uh, the applicant has already worked with ODOT, but again, we would like uh, the documentation of their agreement that those can uh, go in the right of way. Three, lighting fixtures must be housed to prevent direct view of lighting elements, particularly from residences. Uh, staff feels this gives us uh, plenty of support in review of zoning certificate and uh, even going forward to make sure that uh, lights are adequately screened. And four, applicant must seek review and or obtain approval from ODOT to ensure the traffic signal on 741 is adequately timed before zoning certificate will be issued. Again, the applicant has already started working with ODOT, uh, but we would like to have uh, good records of ODOT's exact plan moving forward. The exact procedure of approval uh, uh, has not exact explicitly been stated by ODOT, but uh, they have certainly agreed uh, that this will happen and needs to happen uh, for uh, this site to move forward. And if the board has any questions for me at this time, I'd be happy to discuss. I know the applicant is with us tonight and they'll be happy to share uh, any additional details or answer questions, but if you have anything for staff. I have one question, Alex. When was the exchange at Spring Valley UD approved. The original plan development was approved in 2005. Okay, thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I think um, you know certainly for many residents, uh, the goal is to uh, review both the grading and placement of lights to make sure that everything is adequately screened to cast light. Uh, below the horizontal plane. So again, anything that's sort of an unhoused light can't exist. It has to be blocked so the light shines downward only. Uh, so yeah, that would apply to any residents. Uh, we would review that against our code. Yes, sir. My village. Yes, sir. Both Montgomery County and ODOT have reviewed and, and are fi finishing review of the numbers, but generally feel that these improvements would allow much better flow uh, even than what exists now without Wawa Fuel Station. So yeah, I think these are, are positive improvements. Exactly, yeah. We're working with ODOT, talking about additional access to 741. ODOT has minimum, uh, here's a good view of the aerial, uh, ODOT has minimum distances that they'll allow between new intersections. Part of the issue here is that there's a right turn into Commerce Boulevard. So to have a left turn out there would potentially create conflict with a stacking lane. So ODOT would explicitly not approve any new uh, access points, ingress, egress within that sort of block, unfortunately. It was discussed, but they were, they were pretty pushed back pretty hard on that idea.
like this fuel station. Yes, yep, so. Right, yeah, so the the specific idea of, of flowing the traffic around the back was used at the other areas of Exchange at Spring Valley. The primary reason there is that it's just a very narrow site without a lot of room. Uh, so one, having stacking distance to gain signalized access to 741 within the development is challenging. So that's why really Miami Village Drive, uh, and then actually let me flip back. Uh, you'll see here, yeah, there are multiple areas along this corridor where it's developed more densely along the frontage, so all the way down to Summit Point, which isn't even in the Exchange of Spring Valley. Uh, Commerce Boulevard and then Exchange Place Boulevard all were right turn only, so even those areas were given limited access, let alone full access like at Miami Village Drive or up at Ferndown uh, or Spring Valley. Um, so these areas were all pretty locked down per ODOT. Uh, so getting the rear access uh, sort of was the original plan for most of Exchange of Spring Valley is that some access could be given, uh, but all of the site drives are, are gained from interior to the site rather than directly on 741. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, for sure. No, there's, there's no telling what drivers will or won't do, but, um, you know. So one, one item that came up uh, specifically in the Zoning Commission hearing uh, was introducing a, a higher curb on this specific pork chop. Uh, some of the other ones are more of a beveled curve, which, again, allows for easier ability to drive over. Uh, so that was one measure discussed with the engineers and ODOT of, uh, of better blocking that. So again, it's, it's more of an obstacle if somebody's wanting to just drive over it. I mean, they could do a weird loop out thing, which it's going to happen and, and no amount of blocking really will stop that. But uh, a higher curb was discussed as a way to better mitigate that. Oh, trying to go north. Yeah, I mean, I, I, there's certainly a chance. Um, you know, I, I think with. Certainly can discuss with both police department and our, our county engineer to see if there are any additional, uh, you know, ways to actually control the flow there. Uh, the block itself on the north side is, um, you know, within the public roadway itself, um, partially between the public and private roadway, but um, if there are any thoughts on that, I'd be happy to discuss, or we can discuss with the applicant further. And for what it's worth, I drive over there quite a bit. Um, Spring Valley on the way to my house. I experience a lot more issues with the stacking on Miami Village than I do with anybody crossing a pork chop or trying to mm -hmm. get the left out of there. Um, Reese Moore from uh, Real Property Acquisitions, <clears throat> address is 1690 West Lane Avenue. Um, <laughs> I wrote all the um, specific items that I did to address the um, stipulations that staff had, and honestly, Alex hit them all on the head, and I would just be beating a dead horse um, if I were to read you this right now, but I am here with a few of my partners, and then 
uh, Patrick Warnemet from Wawa, uh, lead engineer, and then also our engineer from CESO, Eric Boyd. So if you have any questions, we'd be more than happy to answer them. Real property acquisitions. So for under this LLC, um, there has not been one yet. This is gonna be the one that will be our Wawa's moving forward under this. Um, but we've done Lens Crafters, a build the suit in Dublin, Ohio, um, the Rail Restaurant Burger um, in Dublin, actually next door as well. Um, Valvoline in, in Gahanna, those are just past few in the past few years. And those were under different LLCs. The D, which, oh yes, oh yeah, for to not develop a, a medical center was what was agreed to. Um, no, I mean, it's just, it's a good piece of property in a good area at a traffic light, so. Um, yep. I was, this is Jamie Moore uh, from Real Property as well, uh, 3050 Oak Ridge Road, Upper Arlington, Ohio. If you just wanted a, a longer list of stuff that we've done, um, I'd be more than happy to give that to you. Done a build the suit for Cameron Mitchell, um, Rusty Bucket, um, done a couple Swensons, uh, done a couple Wright Pack Credit Unions in Columbus. Um, so. Yes, we got a little late to the game hooking up with Wawa, unfortunately, but uh, we're trying. <laughs> yeah, and we are working on another one with Wawa as well, like we're approved and everything in Wilmington, Ohio. We should start construction sooner there than here. I'm good. Thank you. My name is Robert Baird and I live at 2476 Featherston Court here in Miami Township. And I do not oppose the Wawa business. I'm a retired civil engineer and I do have a related concern on the additional traffic that will be generated from the Wawa <coughs> facility store and the traffic that will be affected down Miami Village Drive as you show up on here, Miami Village Drive is at the northern tip of that. Uh, the zoning board met on 8-13, uh, and they did discuss and some of those of which you're going to be talking about here tonight, their recommendations. What I would like to address is the traffic uh, on the Miami Village Drive that was not discussed, other the part that being the increased traffic. So there's like three issues that I see on there. Issue one, Miami Village Drive is currently used as a cut through for people wanting to avoid the traffic light at 741 and Austin Boulevard. I've walked and I've driven and rode my bike up and down Miami Village Drive many times over the last 16 years. I've personally seen lawn maintenance firms, home delivery trucks, construction trucks, and personal people driving their vehicles on this roadway and using it as a cut through. Issue number two. The same cut through traffic is definitely not traveling the posted 25 mile an hour speed limit. I know this is a known township police issue. Occasionally the township has posted uh, speed utility enforcement type of uh, efforts, but those are only a short term in doing the remedy of that and then it's back up. Issue number three and last one, traffic on Miami Village Drive will definitely increase with the additional traffic from Wawa, 
the Duncan store and the First Flight Commerce Center that's on that North Point development that's on the uh, Austin Boulevard. As you know, the first building is going up and there's five more coming up after that. I've already seen some of the construction traffic going to and from that site now and it will increase. So what I would like to do is propose and something for your staff or the police to talk about and maybe consider if it hasn't been already considered before will be the installation of four-way stops along Miami Village Drive to help slow down the traffic or to stop it or to minimize that speed and to eliminate, hopefully eliminate some of the cut through traffic. I would suggest three locations. Four-way stop at Highland Village Lane, the north end with uh, Arbor Ridge Lane. Second one would be Highland Vill Village Lane, the south end which is also where Wil Windsor Village Drive is at. And then the last one where Hillgate and Edgerton Drive come together. And that's Edgerton Drive, the north end. Those would be the three minimum ones. Of course, right now, there's 11 different street intersections now. I'm only suggesting or you consider doing three of them. If three of them doesn't work, then maybe you could do it at four more in between. I would hate to see that you do it all 11. That would be nuts. But three, I think, would be something that I would want you to consider if it hasn't been in the past. And if it had been in the past, with the increased traffic that's here now and the stuff that's going to be on Austin, I think it's time to relook at that again. Uh, that's all I have. Any other questions of me? No, thanks. Alex, is that something that we can influence if we decide it's a good thing? It's something certainly we can discuss with our county engineer's office and work Will with police push back on us? public works county engineer. Yeah, I, I don't know that it's specifically been broached. I don't know if anybody else has any initial thoughts, but certainly that's a, a good suggestion to bring to our county engineer and, and happy to do that and, and advocate for anything we can do to control those speeds. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have we noticed, I mean, uh, you know, the thoughts been on my mind too with regard to the development that's going on on both sides of that drive have we seen anything that's illustrated that there's increased speeds increased traffic through the village through that area of the villages that's one area we're going to absolutely address the new speed trailer uh, that okay. we have out and about right now that's one of my top priority areas to at least get some preliminary data so we can analyze and see what if any has changed since last year when we had a trailer out there um, that would be something we'll be doing here in the near, very near future. We discussed okay. with the county administrator. So. I'm right. certainly happy to discuss with the county engineer or potentially regional planning commission to discuss getting an updated traffic count uh, just to see where we are compared to several years ago and uh, help make informed decisions based on that information as well. Okay. Uh, any other opponents that would like to speak? Please come forward. I'm Linda Bird and I live at 4126 Keep Bird Lane and I um, I just have a question by putting the Wawa station what is that going to do to the traffic flow there at Austin Landing when you come off 75 with people wanting to go to the Wawa because during traffic rush hour that is pretty backed up will that be of any concern uh, traffic coming off I-75 through Austin Landing. North and southbound turning, going east on Austin Boulevard and then going north on 741. Well, because that gets heavily congested at times right, right there. Mm -hmm. So is that going to cause a lot more congestion or maybe just for a brief time until the opening, grand opening's over? It'll just go back what do you to think, normal, Alex? You think? Yeah, just quickly, and, and certainly the, the applicant could maybe address it if we have more questions, but my understanding from the, the, the traffic study that the applicant conducted is that the majority of this traffic is uh, traffic that captures existing traffic on 741 rather than generating new traffic. Right. I certainly understand, you know, on a, on a grand opening, if people aren't familiar with Wawa, we very well may get people who go, well, I want to go see Wawa. Mm -hmm. um, right. But my understanding is that it's pretty significantly a lot of uh, captured traffic rather than generated traffic. I'm glad Miami Township is considering one. We visited two of them in Florida, and we really love them. Mm -hmm. So I hope that does get built somewhere. Okay. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Are there any other opponents tonight? 
All right, Ms. Mr. Matthews, you had a question. Um, it was more of a comment, but the uh, that uh, that street there, uh, marketplace, that's part of the exchange that Ober built, correct? Okay. So uh, when Mr. Ober built that area, he um, asked for the township to take control of maintenance of the streets, which um, ended up we ended up not doing that. But at the time, you mentioned the street, or it was mentioned the street, uh, the depth of the, of the surface was not uh, standard for what the county standards are. And so I just wanted you to be aware of that. I don't know, there might be fuel trucks or heavy trucks going through that back through m on Marketplace, but just to be aware that that street may not hold it. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to that won't influence the decision. It's more of an information point for you. Sure. Hi, I'm uh, Patrick Warnament, 260 West Baltimore Pike, Wawa, Pennsylvania, 19063, but I live in Ohio. Um, we've got an agreement now to uh, contribute to the maintenance of that road, so oh. I think that'll be it with the rest of the folks in the exchange there, so I think that'll help. Oh, good. Okay, good. Yeah, well, I'm sure Ober thanks you too. Yeah. <laughs> All right, any, any other comments here? I motion to close a public hearing for zoning case number 37405. I second. Mr. Culp? Aye. Mr. Posey? Aye. I make, I make a motion to approve resolution number 78, 2024, a resolution to adopt a final development plan under zoning case 37405 FDP for Wawa Fueling Station. I think you are. Yeah, do I have to read the language? First? I can do it if you okay. don't mind. Do you want to? I'll make a motion to adopt the resolution uh, 78. Yeah. Bust myself up. I'll start <laughs> over. I make a motion to approve resolution 78 2024, a resolution to adopt a final development plan under zoning case number 374 05, the final development plan for a Wawa fueling station. Therefore, be it resolved, the Miami Township Board of Trustees adopts the final, approves the final development plan under zoning case number 374 05 FDP for a Wawa fueling station and adopts the zoning commission recommendation. Is there a second? Yeah, I'll second. Mr. Culp? Aye. Mr. Posey? Aye. So do we have more text for the issue or not? So I think we're done with the zoning issue. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. So the easy part now. You guys can do this on your own, right? <laughs> Department head comments, please, Chief Stegelmeyer. Briefly, board, I just wanted to let uh, the residents know and let the board know that we successfully deployed the new speed trailer out and about in the community. So uh, be cognizant to that and um, get a chance to stop by one of the neighborhoods near you and you'll see it. it it's very, <laughs> uh, very <laughs> bright and, and let you know exactly what you're doing. Good. Um, and I want to thank you for the support and person that speed trailer I think it's going to be used in quite a few different ways uh, it's, got, it's also a message board so uh, we'll be able to assist them in the other township departments when they have a need for an emergency signal or a sign that needs to go up so again I just wanted to uh, thank you for your support with the new speed trailer and, and it will be coming to a neighborhood soon sounds good good evening board I've got uh, two quick items um, I just wanted to read a little blurb from my memo uh, saying, Board, I thank you for the continuous support assisting our capital needs and community service programs with the installation of the ARP funds. Without this generosity, we would not have been able to complete additional roadway resurfacing in 2024, revitalize our parks network, and improve our public works fleet. Uh, so, so I do thank you for all that help. Uh, and second, I just wanted to touch again uh, a little bit more in depth on our pavement assessment. Uh, that we did this year. Um, in general, our budget allocation per year for resurfacing is around $450,000, which covers around two miles of roadway a year. 
Uh, we have also a need to enhance our ADA ramp compliance in neighborhoods and storm water infrastructure. Over the past few years as director, I've had a lot of uh, questions and concerns with different streets and different neighborhoods, and this assessment really let us put it down on paper and get a whole view of our, ton our township infrastructure. So while there are sections, uh, little small sections throughout the different subdivisions, we did identify Huber as a whole subdivision that needed a lot of assistance and support. So with that being said, we have a strategy to try and put those dollars back in the communities and get some additional support uh, to, to improve a whole subdivision while um, improving different areas throughout the township. So uh, we do hear our residents' uh, concerns and we are uh, strategic, we're doing a strategic plan to uh, improve our infrastructure um, as quick as possible, but within the confines of our budget. So just want to touch on that and again, just say thank you, board. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Mr. Carlson. Uh, yes, quickly board. Um, in response to changes in Ohio law, uh, township staff is preparing to open a uh, public comment period seeking feedback on the land use of adult use cannabis. Um, certain communities regulate this land use differently. Some of them prohibit it outright. Some of them uh, allow it with certain regulations, distances from one another, so on and so forth. Uh, so specifically, we're hoping to learn more uh, from the community about their hopes or concerns uh, for how and where this land use should be permitted in Miami Township. Uh, so uh, starting tomorrow, uh, check our website, Facebook for more information, but we're hoping uh, running through the end of September uh, to allow uh, township residents to submit any questions.